Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello, everyone. So today's guest is really, really special to me. We connected out of nowhere and we clicked immediately. And I love to call her a dear friend of mine now. So um, today we have Venus and Venus Salem. She's a transformational coach. She specializes in leadership, communication, and relationships. So you might as well listen in here. She's also a clinical sexologist and a trauma specialist. And we all know with everything that's happening these days, I'm sure she's a person to listen to. Venus, hi, love. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Hannah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. So I always start by asking my guests. The, the show is named Empowered to Grow. What was the thing that came or comes to your mind when, when you heard of the name and when I asked you, okay, would you like to be on my podcast, Empowered to Grow? <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, it's your podcast, though. The immediate answer that came to me is yes, of course. I'd love to <laughs> I know. Thank you. <laughs> huge privilege to be on the plat- same platform as you because I know how empowered you are and I know how beautifully you like to, in- to empower others as well. And you do it so well. Thank so you. it's just right up my alley to be with you. <laughs> and when I think about empowerment, for me, it's, um, you know, um, because... Uh, there's a reason why I study trauma and that is because I know that people who are stuck in survival mode are so longing for that thriving element to enter their lives and they're not aware of, or they are very, you know, too aware perhaps or hyper aware that the sequence of traumas that have occurred in their lives have stopped them from getting released from that um, repetitive Dis- disruptive uh, pattern in their lives and it, it basically gets in their way of feeling empowered and feeling like they could thrive in, in life um, so for me empowerment is the most essential most important feeling you need to feel in order to overcome any obstacles or any pains or any unwanted patterns in your life and you just want to thrive and grow and fulfill your potential sure sure well you yourself are empowered to grow in your own unique way. So I would love if you were to share with us a bit about your story, your journey, whether personal level, professional level, how it is that came to be that who you are today. Okay. (laughs) Uh, My journey, my journey is very similar to a lot of people. I think my journey has been, um, I grew up in a lot of different countries. My parents moved a lot uh, due to their work. They're both doctors um, which was a huge privilege because it meant that I lived in the Middle East for a while. I lived in, in the UK for a while. Um, I'm an avid traveler and an avid reader. And I don't think I've, there's anything more pleasurable than to immerse yourself in different cultures and the diversity of uh, the richness of the diversity of our human race. Okay. Now, my childhood was not always perfect. I, um, uh, there have been some traumas in my childhood. Um, I, ha- I developed diabetes at a very early age. I think I was about seven due to the stress of, the, um, of some of the traumas that have happened in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and throughout my life, I think that I've experienced pretty much the, 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 you know, the big markers of trauma. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sexual um, ab- abuse and uh, you know, physical, mental, emotional, and so on. And what that did for me was helped me develop a, a, a level of understanding with other victims of mm-hmm. trauma that I would definitely would not have acquired if I had gone through a normal life. And it certainly wouldn't have brought me to where I am now, which is someone who specializes in um, tra- trauma and 
I, you know, I do love doing the research on it to, to find new ways of helping clients how to overcome their traumas or how to overcome the patterns that the traumas have um, created in them and that are essentially destroying their life slowly. Um, and yeah, so my journey has been marked by a sequence of learning how to overcome and how to empower myself. And here's the secret. The way I empowered myself through it all is by empowering others. Yes. You heal yourself by healing others. And healing only occurs in relationships. Any trauma expert will tell you this. The problem with what is trauma? Trauma is that incident or that event that happens that creates a separation between you and the rest of the world. Sure. So in order to heal that, you need to heal within the relationship with the rest of the world slowly bit by bit because you, know, you need to develop some trust in yourself first you need to develop trust in others and that's how that's the first step towards feeling empowered within yourself so more like empowerment by immersion or re-immersion in that sense but yeah um, and like with safe boundaries and with more awareness and, and understanding of everything that comes along with it yes absolutely and that comes it, the more you trust yourself, the more able you are to be um, assertive with your boundaries. So, you know, your boundaries don't become a maybe, mm -hmm. only if kind of iffy boundaries yeah. uh, that easily break. No, they become very much your fort, your, uh, it's where you get your strength from. Wholehearted people, people who are out there and giving and really able to serve others are people who have the strongest boundaries, research has found. Um, we don't know this or believe it but it's true well i think in, from from that perspective as well we're talking about like when you talk about self-empowerment you also have to come from self-love obviously but self-care and i think part of the care is the boundaries we don't we i mean i know i i grew up seeing on being conditioned that self-love is is a form of vanity that's like me first but but it's actually now i'm getting more to understand that by putting me first i can take care of others but not me first as in i'm detached i'll get it all it's actually me maintaining my emotional and mental and physical sanity <laughs> and balances to be able to to come from a place of giving and service and do you think that that really is also another important element when it comes to healing Absolutely. I think, I believe that self-love is the very first fundamental step that anyone has to, first of all, step on very firmly and be very grounded in before they can leap and go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we, you know, some environments don't help with the idea of what self-love is, or they don't understand what self-love is. A lot of people think that self-love is uh, narcissism or vanity, or it takes you away from the important things that you, your prior, as a woman particularly, your priorities should be your love for your children, your husband first, and so on. You know, your self-love comes way at the end of the list. All right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, true. Unfortunately. And we, we've seen it with our mothers, we've seen it with our grandmothers, and we are expected to perform in the same way. But actually, looking back, we can see the detrimental effect that's had on our mothers and grandmothers' mental health. Sure. Um, they've tolerated so much and they've accepted so much. And just because we are, uh, you know, the, the divorce rates back then were, aren't as high as it is today. Actually, if anything, it proves how much they tolerated rather than how much they flourished uh, in their relationships, exactly. Right? So, so. It's love is, yeah, essentially the most important. And it, there's so many ways to express it. Um, and it's so worth it. And some of us need it more than others. Sure. You know, some of us grew in environments where uh, self-love came naturally because everyone else in our environment loved us unconditionally and we felt it. That's how we developed our attachments. Some of us really struggle um, despite being in uh, what, from the outside world, you'd call it a, a safe environment or a, um, you know, a, a safe home, if you like. And some of us didn't have a home at all. So 
self-love is such a luxury that we can't even imagine what it's like. True. That is true. So following up from that and from where you stand now, what advice would you impart on your 20 year old self? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. She was very lost. Bless her. Um, yes. I would say to her, slow down, mm -hmm. slow right down. There is no rush. Actually look inside and figure out who you are first. And then what do you want needs to come from who you are rather than from who they want you to be. So <laughs> stop what you're doing, stop what you're thinking. And there is no rush. Yeah, pick your own speed, pick your own pace. Do what you really want to do, where, where your soul is calling you to do. That's what I would tell her. I'm smiling because you know, resonate a lot on that side. <laughs> so this is where we, we connected on so many levels. So on the other end of the spectrum from a future time capsule, what would you like to, uh, what would you like your 90 year old self to thank you today for? To thank me today for? Oh gosh. Um, okay. <laughs> hmm. I think my 90 year old self, would be amazed that I've lived that long. <laughs> Just All it. here. By <laughs> everything, she would be super proud of me for, for keeping healthy and keeping fit and being young at heart to be able to live that long. Uh, and I think she would thank me for being resilient and thank me for not giving up and say, yeah, you were crazy. You know, <laughs> bitch back then and you're still a crazy bitch now but I thank you for that I love that <laughs> <laughs> well if you're on a stage now and you are addressing tens of thousands of women and you're addressing them about being empowered to grow and you're summing up your speech what is one main message you want to leave them with Wow. Big question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a lot about these questions. Bear in mind, it took a few weeks of, of delays because I'm still thinking of the questions. <laughs> okay, so let me transport myself on a stage where there's thousands of women who I look upon and think, oh, I really want you to thrive. Yes. I really want you to be empowered. I guess my main message to them would be there is nothing that you need that is outside of you. I love everything, that. Everything you need to thrive is right here. And you've got it. Make it happen. I think make it happen, those three words, they've take, taken me through a lot. Yeah. Find a way. Find a way. Find a way. Believe in yourself, make it happen. I think that if, if we as women, and we're sending the message to as many women as possible, just believe in that without listening to, to the chatter around us, without listening to, without being susceptible to, you know, that you can't and you shouldn't and you won't and, and all I the... Love, I love them. I love them. I love that. I love the, the, the they give power. <laughs> when, when you ignore them, it's just like... <laughs> great because it means that when you do look at me now right yeah that's true that's true well where can our listeners find you in virtual space to get more of your pearls of wisdom ah oh, okay that's I'm, I'm still working on my website however i am available on facebook venus salem <laughs> I've also got my page, House of Venus. I've also got a wonderful ed educational group called Let's Talk About Sex. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'll be putting, putting in a lot more content, educational content in the coming weeks. Um, so, it, it, because for me, especially for women and also for men, absolutely, they, I think the secret to our vitality and our thriving is to understand who we are not just human beings, but also sexual beings. Sure. And 
a lot of the time there's something wrong with our sexual health, which is essential to our entire well-being. That we we don't talk about it because we're too scared. If you know what if because it's taboo. <laughs> just, you know, does it make me a freak or whatever? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we normalize things that should not be normal. Right. And this is the kind of feedback I get back from um, from people I work with. So that's why I've created that space. It's a safe space, an educational space. Please do uh, yeah, find me and I'll invite you to join the group. And, and I'll put all the links on the, with the episode as well. So, you know, they can have the quick access to it. I appreciate it. Thanks, Anna. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your energy, most importantly, with us. And thank you for being here. And um, I can't wait to learn more from you. <laughs> I can't wait for everyone to listen to this and uh, always be the beautiful being and energy being that you are. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Empower to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, Join my Facebook group, Empower to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that Empowered You empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.